Hip Hop since 1987.com. competitions anymore we have to do like a world competition like to even be reinstated back into the Bellas yeah. so it's it's like totally different like kind of adventures I think that we and it's another thing this movie didn't plan on having a sequel so the the fact that we had a sequel because fans wanted a sequel to the fans what the sequel is about because they actually like made it happen so I think this is a fan made sequel so I think because I don't think it, was, it didn't start out as a sequel at all mm -hmm. so we must be done <laughs> so, <laughs> you know if they have a picture of the three let's get it yeah <laughs> How you guys doing? Terrell. Terrell. Hi, Terrell. Hip Hop since 1987. Nice. How much of a say so did you guys have with the the music selection? Say for instance, when you did the 90s scene, did you guys get to pick the songs that you that you sung, or was it in the script already? I didn't get to pick it, but I was like, hell yeah! I was like, damn! I was like, oh my god! I was so nostalgic. I was like, those were like all the songs I used to listen to over and over and over and over again. And like, we just got to meet Montel Jordan the other day. Was that last night? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I would die. I would die. Like, because we used to sing this out. Well, I used to sing this out. We all did a million times. And we sing it in the movie, yeah. so it was just like amazing. But one song that we pushing for, Push for. was Esther Dean wrote this original amazing song. Push for. Amazing song. They rallied for it. We were like, and I felt like I was getting fired. I was like, I have nothing to do <laughs> with this. So good though. You guys are making this complicated for me. But well, no, did I, you write that song for us, or did you just write it because I wrote it? Uh, I write for Universal Pictures anyway, so like I, so I always. They always brought me in to hear the song and try to figure out what's the next song and like pitch. I could pitch songs to the movie, so I had already pitched a couple of songs to the movie, and then this uh, crazy youngster came last, and the girls wanted it so bad, and I was like, it's a lot of the paperwork we gotta do, and they's like, they should put it in the movie now. I'm like, we can't. It's illegal to you have to go through some things, so it actually got in there. And then Flo did a video, and I think we all we also do a mashup video, so it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's yeah. Great song. Mm -hmm. All right, so great. How much of what you guys did was scripted, and then what was ad lib? Because your lines. It was like, oh god, what the hell is she going to say next? It was well, like, crazy. My lines, they were like, well, I think with this one, because we had more of a budget, like, it wasn't just one take. They're like, okay, now we're going to do a fun run. And so, like, the like one of the last scenes, like, I'm just, like, doing, like, like 30 to 40 different lines of just, like, different things of what we're going to do after we graduate. Yeah. And it was just, like, it's so fun because Lily's, like, so weird and, like, you have to kind of, like, think about everything and just put it all in one sentence. So it's like super fun and Liz is like a master, Elizabeth Banks is like a master of improv. So she was just like super great with like letting us do our own thing after like, we did a couple of script runs and after that she was just like, do you guys this thing? And just great. It was like super fun and like yeah. organic. Because a lot of mine was improv because I knew what lines I had. You were so funny though. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> I, I, they's like, oh that was funny. I was like, I just 
did that because yeah, I was. I was already <laughs> doing it. But um, uh, Elizabeth let us do a lot of improv. Like she was like the teacher say, just do your homework, and after you finish, you guys can go play. So it's like that. We got to do our homework. We did our script lines, and then she said, okay. Let's play, you know. So I think that's what made it even funner. Right? Comedy, okay. I think that's important. Yeah. That like, if you if you just stick to the script so much, it gets super dry and like really like not funny. Yeah. So when yeah. you let that organic, when you trust the actors and like the director trusts you and there's that thing and like you know your character, it just I think it just makes it better, you know. Did you get to improv? Yeah. We, did. we found some. Yes. <laughs> so that was fun. We got to try really weird stuff. That's just. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If he didn't improv, I would be like surprised that they didn't let him like just oh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, he's so funny. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Kim? I have a question. Kim Ford, JulieMag.com. What is your transition like? You started, like you just said, you write the Universal. Mm -hmm. And now you're on the acting side. Did you always want to act, or how did that transition come about? I always want to do voiceovers. So mm -hmm. I did voice I at uh, Ice Age. Or I did I, I did voiceover over Rio and um, but I also and write you wrote songs. That song. Yes, oh, <laughs> so I write songs for everybody. I feel that that's my main job. And then um, I went in and I was like just humbling and said, you know, I like to do some voiceover. And um, I went in to do Lauren's voiceover, but they didn't have no job, so they sent me to casting. And it was like I think three weeks before Pitch Perfect started. And she said, well, it's a live action movie if you like to do that. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, and when they sent me, I thought it was just gonna be an extra in the back, like in LA. And they was like, no, you're in Baton Rouge for three months. And I'm like, the hell am I going there for? So, so it was a, it was a, the transition was hard for the first movie because I doubted myself of why should I be there when I should probably go write songs. Because I think with Rihanna's album, we've been doing that. So I felt like, I was unsure about if I should be here or be there. And the second time, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm doing a movie. They like, you ain't gonna write? No, nope. I'm doing a movie. It's my ass. I'm doing a movie. I'm an actress now. <laughs> Transition easy. <laughs> Music money is funny money. Movie money, they pay. <laughs> Robin. Robin Lori. Yes. Um, hey, Robin. I know. My nieces, teenagers love you guys. What do you think the magnet is? What do you think the attraction is to these young kids out here? I think growing up. Oh, do you want to take? What uh, no, you start. I think um, <laughs> yeah. when you're growing up, like I think like these are the movies that really inspire you because you look up to like wanting to get older and like what it's like and and you do go through all these struggles of who you are and how you're accepted. And I think this movie, Pitch Perfect, at least the first one, you get to really see how everyone has who they are, whether it's awkward, whether it's like uncomfortable, whether it's like finding out who you are. And I think teenagers really gravitate towards that because it's like that's what they're going through. Yeah. And they get to see it in all like 10 of us, which is like great because there's one or two that they can relate to. And, it's like, oh, cool, we are normal. Like, it's not like... And if you're not normal, normal, so what? It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's celebrated. Yeah. So everybody's a Hana. Everybody's a, you know, SD, Everybody's a Becca. Everybody's a Fat Amy. And, and I think that's why Fat Amy's character really resonates with a lot of people because those characters would have been the characters that they would talk about. You know, they would put those characters down. And the way that they um, bring the beauty to Fat Amy, like it, she's already beautiful. They show you in media that she's beautiful. They're not knocking her down. They like, she's the sexy one, I'm the hot one. So I feel like the movie is resonates with so many people because it's the opposite of what they would do to you in the media. It's the opposite of what they would do to a lesbian black girl. You know, it's the opposite of what they would do to an Asian girl. You know, they like, no, they, they don't blonde and blue eyes and skinny, they're, normal, beautiful, variety girl. So that's what I think resonates with everybody, not just kids, everybody. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not a mean movie, right. you know? You guys are superheroes. I yeah. 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 Really? I'll say, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, however many, 10? So I'm Dr. Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the other connection is music. Everyone yeah. can connect yeah. to these great songs and to hear them reimagined is really cool. Yeah. So I think that's a very natural way to Bring people yeah. into the movie. So good. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, Terry. Yeah, I write for a Real Times Media too, where you guys give it in terms of being risque and keeping a mind about keeping a fam. I mean, I'm saying family friendly. So. Oh, 
I was pretty much a slut though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we. I don't think it came there. I don't know. Did we get dirty? I think we. I think Liz just kind of let us, you know, do whatever. But then, you know, obviously she's like, well, we can't use that one. Oh yeah, that like, cuss a lot. So they kept on, you know, we'll look back at stuff. We'll look back. Bring some of those cuss words back. So yeah, PG. Yeah, I think it was. I think when Pitch Perfect was first made, I mean, quote me. If, I mean, like, stop me if I'm wrong. Universal people, but I think it was rated R, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was never rated R. No, because they kept on telling us we could have to take. We could only have one cuss word. And like, cause I said all in bitches on the one, and right, that right. was the one cuss word one I could get. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then I got to get it again. I could bitches. Uh, <laughs> keep the cuss word. The first script, it was like it was like super risky, and like the like. Oh, yeah. So so maybe they maybe that they were like maybe. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I was gonna ask that because it started out with a mature theme, you know, yeah. with the uh, flashing or whatever her outfit. Oh yeah. So That's I was funny. just wondering about how <laughs> how close to the line that they allowed y'all to you know to dance and tap dance around that line. We, well, we, saw, we, saw, we, saw, yeah. we saw the line. Yeah, we didn't touch it. Yeah. I, I didn't touch it. Yeah, we just saw it. He was in a mesh shirt with his nipples on. Yeah, that was <laughs> hot. I think he touched it. That crossed oh, the line. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My torso crossed. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. Uh, with there being so many uh, dance scenes in the movie, how long did you guys actually spend devoting to learning the dance moves and training for the different dance scenes? Three yeah, three weeks of like full on, was it four to six hours of dance? Eight hours! It was a lot. Oh. Eight hours. I'm like, it was one minute of dance a day, <laughs> but it was a full month and... With Usher's choreographer, it's not yeah. it wasn't oh. easy, man. Jones. Jones. Come on, Jones. But he's in there. so talented. Yeah. Goodness. Making it look all easy, too. He's like, yeah. Yeah. okay, let's do it. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> Yeah. But we were so much better this time around. Yeah. Like the first, the first time we were shooting it, like it took us like a, a full month almost yeah. to learn just like ah, sound, sound, right. like just this. Yeah. And then like with this one, our numbers are so insane, and we like pull them out of pants. Like, yeah, doing twerking. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, did I sign up for this one? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, I did. Yes. I did. I signed we're up. like in a total girl group. Yeah, we are. Yeah. It prepared me though, because I, I would go, I went out on tour with Nikki Minaj uh, just like five days ago, the UK, and doing all this prepared me, doing the dances and everything, so I was like, yo, I'm so glad I did that, because I get steps easy now, you know, I get the eight count easier, and then you, you know, I used to have stage fright, so when we did Pitch Perfect 2, what, all those people came out, it was like a whole stadium for the world, so it kind of got you ready, not kind of, it got me ready and not so shy to be in front of people because even though those people are extra, they're not. You know, if I perform for y'all, y'all y'all real. <laughs> like, so you look at me crazy, I'm like, oh shit, I'm doing something wrong. So it really prepared us to, prepare me to get out there more. So it was some hard dances. They're crazy. So. He was awesome. He was Hi, I'm Julian from Control Magazine. Hi, Julian. How hard was it to get Barack and Michelle in the actual movie with you guys? Did you see them? Yeah. <laughs> they ain't there. Yeah, it's like a fake movie. It's yeah. 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 When the first movie came out. That's funny. Let's do that again. Yeah. Let's have them do that again. <laughs> Invite us again. Yeah. <laughs> it's that invitation. Yeah, and a Kendrick song for the president. Yeah, but I think he wanted all of us to see. Go. See, we shall do that. And, oh, Kobe Bryant loves Pitch Perfect. Oh, really? His wife. Yep. Nice. Yep. Nice. yep. We have groupies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have <a> <laughs> Uh, I have a question for you. Um, last night at the spring, you said, again, Kim Ford, Jubilee Night. You said you came from um, the world of YouTube. So what was that transition like, and what did you think when you got that call? Or yeah, email? well, I've always used YouTube as like tiny crumbs to lead me to places I really want to go. And I love those crumbs. Hey, I'll make them, and a new video comes out in two hours. But I won't stop it. But for me, the dream has always been to do all of the different things in entertainment, including strange, confusing techno rap songs. Yes. I will play them for you later and your head will melt. Yeah. Uh, and then also weird movies and fun television stuff. So YouTube for me was a place to start to then do all of the strange things I would like to do. Do you still do YouTube? Or you, yeah, you've done it? always, every week. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's like push-ups, but very infrequent. Yeah. <laughs> What's your YouTube page? Oh, just Flula, F-L-U-L-A, like you have a flu in Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions before we go to photos? 
Yeah. How much of the film, well, uh, where did you guys shoot the majority of the film? I noticed some Georgia placements in, uh, in some of the film, but how much of the film was actually shot in Atlanta, if any, and where did you guys shoot the most of the film? It was all Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Well, where was the studio stuff? I don't know where oh. the studio stuff No, it was shot. shot. Was that New Orleans? No, it was old. It was old. <coughs> one of the shots, they made it like we were in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, they put the signs up like Yeah, and they had uh, Georgia tags yeah. on the cars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We wasn't there. I, was <laughs> like, I love Baton Rouge, but I would have loved being in Atlanta better. Yeah. That would have been amazing. If they shoot Pitch Perfect 3, please bring it to Atlanta. Like, uh, yeah, it's hard to get out of Baton Rouge. You can't get out. <laughs> now I see what the people feel like. They're like, I can't get out of here. <laughs> crazy. The last plane is at five, yeah. and then you gotta drive an hour to get there. So uh. we love you, Baton Rouge. We love you. <laughs> we love your food for sure. That's how I got like this. <laughs> okay. Oh, our last question from Ray from Yeah, I'm sorry, Ray from Ray's <laughs> Favorite scene uh, out of the movie? What was your favorite scene to shoot? When I uh, caught on fire with uh, <laughs> was that like a throwback to Michael Jackson? I, de I definitely almost got caught on fire, so <laughs> it was definitely real. They had to spray me with fire retardant, oh, so boy. it was dangerous. <laughs> and then she rolled on me, and I was like, I can't ride that. Shit. So, <laughs> it was fun. Anyway. <laughs> 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 What was your favorite? Oh, the riff off. It's the oh. same. I mean, this, the, from the first one, there's another one this time, and I feel like it's ten times longer and better. And Can you win it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Yeah. No, but I love it. That was my favorite. So many dope surprises and cameos. Yeah, in that so one scene. Cameos. 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 <laughs> my favorite um, scene was the campfire scene in the end when we like find our voice again. It reminded me of like it was very nostalgic of the first movie when we find our voice in the pool, and it just kind of like brought everything together. And I was like, oh my god! And now we're graduating, and it's just like, and now we're singing this song that like is kind of renowned in the world now. And now you tell the whole movie. Well, we can watch this. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you're gonna get us in trouble. I'm like, no. I'm not Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they get yeah, the they get the they get the up school. But um, but yeah, I, I think that was great because it's like it kind of brought all of us back together because there's a lot of storylines that happen and everyone's kind of like finding their own like kind of self. Mm -hmm. So that's like when you really see all of us just together again, and I think that was like really impactful. Really impactful.